For more on the AI ecosystem, uh, Kathy Gao, partner at Sapphire Ventures, growth stage uh, investor in enterprise tech and AI. Where are we in this? Um, I mean, if we're playing baseball, wh wh where are we in the cycle? Where are we in the game? Well, first of all, thanks so much for having me on, Andrew. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I think we're still early on in the game. There's obviously a lot of excitement. It was great for me to come on the show right after the blockbuster earnings because NVIDIA in many ways is the bellwether for AI demand, for gen AI demand in particular in this industry. Um, there's going to be a lot of investor appetite and continue to be. But frankly, you know, there will be significant funds to deploy and will be deployed. But based on what we're seeing in the market today, I think it might be prudent to take a measured approach. It's a very, very fast adoption cycle, faster than we've ever seen from any platform shift. And very often, it's not the first or second or even third wave of companies that make it. And I think there is still a lot to be proven, particularly on the B2B application side of things. When you say on the B2B application side of things, so give me some examples of, of how you think that plays out. Yeah, I think, you know, um, there's a couple of things. Right now, a lot of the value in these private companies are accruing to the infrastructure companies, right? These are the companies that are running the foundational models. And these are also some of the companies like NVIDIA, like OpenAI, that are powering all the applications that sit on top of it, as well as all the ML ops companies that sit on top of it. From the application side, right, there are a lot of things that have to be proven out. We're seeing a lot of companies get tremendous growth right off from the start, but they haven't really cracked something that's super important, and that's user retention, right? A lot of these companies are still figuring out their business models, they're still figuring out how to hook users and keep users on the platform. Um, and until we see more stabilization there, I think there's going to be a lot of movement around what companies survive and what companies um, so, might get acquired. So does this, do you put yourself in, I mean, now to date everybody here, is this 1996, which means there's a, a, still a lot of room to run? Is it 99? I mean, there was, if you remember, back in the day, on the infrastructure side, you could, you could argue an overbuild in the late 90s in, in telecommunications, uh, in some of the different tech, tech hardware platforms at the time, and then, of course, all the software, websites, and other things that were being built upon it. But, of course, 20 years later, you'd look back and say, yep, uh, that all happened, but look where we are today. So how, how do you see that? That's such a great question, Andrew, because the compression, right? If we think back to the dot-com era, there was a great run-up in investment between uh, 1996 and 1999. What I would argue is those three years have now been compressed down. Let's just take ChatGPT, right? It took ChatGPT two months to reach 100 million users. That's just staggering. So we're still early on, but it could be 1998 versus 1996, in my opinion. If you could invest in this space right now, would you stick with an NVIDIA um, just because there's so much demand and that demand is going to persist? Or do you say values move? I mean, every time people have said there's an overvalued company, they've been wrong. Or do you say that there's other places that you can play in where, that are I don't know if they're value plays, but you know, the, where, where, where the market hasn't fully recognized where the opportunity is. Well, I'm a private investor. I would say you know, for institutional investors and retail investors out there, NVIDIA does feel like a safe place to place your money right now. However, if you're looking into the private markets, I think there's a lot of opportunity to invest in really exciting companies. Again, proceed with caution. But on the private market side, you're getting this interesting dynamic because when you're investing in private companies from a venture capital perspective, you are buying preferred shares, right? So these are shares that um, get paid out first. And you're getting this interesting dynamic where your downside risk might be to get your money back. So your downside risk is a 1x times your money, but the upside risk is potentially 10x or way more. So it all really depends on your risk tolerance.